what's the first rule of falconry? Well, in my experience, never trust the birds. When handling and flying birds of prey, there are certain things we must adhere to to ensure the safety and well-being of the birds. And in this video, I'll explain exactly what I mean. Almost all of my birds fly free on a regular basis, however, when they're not flying, we must make sure they cannot get free, even for a split moment, because that's probably when something will go horribly wrong. For example, if the bird's wearing its full furniture, its uh, jesses swivel and leash, and it gets free and ends up in a tree, it could tangle up on a branch and be stuck there. If the bird isn't particularly trained, it may end up being lost, and so on. So it's vital that we get things right. So the furniture are things like the anklets, the leather jesses, the metal swivel, and the leash. Now when we're holding or moving the birds, we apply something we call the safety grip. The leather jesses, they go across the fingers there and through the middle, and the swivel locks in place behind. That's our safety grip. It's also a good idea to tie the falcon's knot onto the glove as well as a secondary measure. When we fly the birds free, there are five things on the checklist we must do first. The first thing is to weigh the bird. Now the bird must be at the right flying weight before we can fly it. If it's too high in weight, it won't likely to be hungry enough to return for food. So it might just sit up in a tree all day thinking, I'm not that hungry, thanks. The second thing we must do is to look at the temperament of the bird. Does the bird look calm or does it look distracted? If we're unsure of how it might fly in that particular setting, we can attach a crayons, which is a line attached to the glove, and do a quick test flight to the hand for a bit of food. And if that goes okay, we're generally quite confident that the bird will fly all right. The third thing we do is to do a little risk assessment of the area and to check the weather. Is it windy? Is there a storm approaching, for example? We look for other dangers. Is there a, a pylon or a busy road nearby that we haven't seen it could fly near? Things like that. The fourth thing we do is to prepare the food. We usually use chicken or quail on displays as it's easy to take apart and use for the different bits of flying. And the fifth thing we do, very important, is to make sure it's wearing the right equipment, furniture, and to pop on the telemetry. Now the telemetry is a transmitter, we use our Marshall GPS transmitter, which allows us to track the bird should it become lost. And the furniture, we need to remove things like the leash and swivel, and the muse jesses. We fly our birds with either just leather thin jesses, which are called flying jesses, or just the anklets. And that's where the whole never trust the bird things comes into it. Although we have reliable birds, we make sure we put that transmitter on just in case something happens. We could have a bird for five or 10 years and it flies really well every single day. But that one day you pop the transmitter on and think to yourself, did I charge the battery or not? I can't remember. Oh, it doesn't matter, the bird flies fine anyway. Well, that's probably the one day when something will go wrong. So, once the bird's been weighed, food's ready, telemetry on, it's ready to fly free. Now, the birds we have do have a certain amount of trust and respect for us and, and us for them as well. But that comes from the manning and the training process. And it's quite different from the fundamentals of actually handling and flying birds of prey. So remember, first rule of falconry, never trust the birds.